everybody, it's Brother Kenneth here yet again, and this one is about marriages ending. So what we're looking at first, a situation where it could be a man or woman, and my example, I may use it as a woman leaving uh, the husband. They are FSSP, and uh, the woman left a person who actually wanted to divorce their husband but stay in good standing with the church. I'm talking about Roman Catholic Church or FSSP, you know, in, uh, under the same umbrella. And uh, they were using this idea that all they have to do is um, divorce them, and uh, then after that's complete, all they have to do is not get remarried or get with a man again, and they uh, won't be. They can go back to uh, church, go to confession, go back to church, and get communion and all that stuff. When the reality is, is you're excommunicated. And how does this go about? Well. The biggest and easiest way, I'm going to explain this in layman's term because that's the best way to explain it, okay? You can go look it up in the catechism or whatever because they're going to, people are going to abuse it like lawyers do with the current laws of the state and the federal government uh, and we'll say activist judges and so forth, is that uh, if you go and you you push forward a divorce, you serve him and he, um, even if he signs it, it really doesn't matter. At some point, men have their backs against the wall because of the... Uh, the kids uh, custody and they can be ruined by child support alone and they'll give it to they'll award that child support amount even if it puts him in a small little shack that's about the size of a motel six you know with no uh, other facility except for a bathroom and a bed that has happened there's a large suicide count of men committing suicide for this reason divorced men you know they never see their kids much after that and it could be because of orchestrated lies but in this case the uh, the wife is expecting to go back to the sacraments. There's a big problem with this, and it's called gray matter. It is in the Catholic Church. Divorce. You ruin someone's life. You're you know, you are responsible for killing them, in their life. And they, if they kill themselves, you're responsible for that too. And on a third note, if you if you go to confession and you tell them. Oh, I've divorced my husband. You really think it's, oh, God forgives you. Well, here's the problem. You can't do that because you were not sorry when you did it, and you're not sorry now. You can't just walk in there and then suddenly get this magic grace blessing and you can get back in the church. You know how I know they're not sorry now? Because you can just say, come on back in. Let's get back together again. She can fix it. She can pray about it. She can flood heaven with rosary novenas. It's her responsibility for him as it is for him to her when they get married are supposed to help each other not think of themselves and do things that they think are best for their own interests remember this doesn't apply to the abuse situation we're talking about an abuse a temper abuse of the uh, the rules of the catholic church for annulment and they want to keep both they want to be divorced and they want to be uh, still in the church so you'll see i just mentioned three things that they they will try to attempt to do by manipulating the uh, facts and so forth for the tribunal yeah, that's another thing in itself. But the gray matter is there. It is, and it's in the catechism, old or new. It is gray matter. That's because it's it's a mortal sin. You dump the person. You put them in the spiritual and mental and physical jeopardy. You turn their life upside down. You took their kids. That's why they call it killing. It's actually a breaking of the commandment, thou shalt not kill. You ruined their life. And then this child support could kill them. And then in addition, they had to get a lawyer for uh, 3000 to $5,000 if they get a cheap one. And then they divide property. All of this stuff done. There's, because you know that St. Rita got the snot beat out of her, and I hate to say it that way. Uh, but I don't expect people to be like St. Rita. You're supposed to separate and then come together at some point to a counselor that will help him deal with his anger. You're supposed to keep working on a marriage. Even in that case, the victim's spouse is when the other spouse dumps them. And we know what Jesus said in the New Testament, that Jesus hates divorce. So why do people think they can get away with doing this stuff when it's a mortal sin in so many levels and who it affects and how it affects them and what the consequences can be, including their suicide, the suicide of the person. And then you think you're just going to go merrily walk up and get communion every day after you confess it because they cannot be sorry for it during the fact that they go at any time after and he's not married she still can get back with him she cannot go to church as long as he's alive and receive the sacraments plain and simple but check with the proper person i can give people tips on how to get an annulment and so forth you know and uh, or how to keep your relationship together that's part of the thing we have to do we give marriage prep classes for the diocese 
that help the young couples get married for the first time over six weeks, uh, one a week. And we do that because our reputation is already there, that when they have spiritual warfare problems in their house, the marriage suffers right away. So we have to be able to counsel them on that level, too. My point is is that the man in the case I was giving was the victim's spouse, and that he was able to basically prove his case that she just got tired of marriage and decided to leave, or she was uh, uh, fooling around and whatever, and doing all the things. She wants a divorce, and she doesn't want to get back together. She doesn't want counseling. She's uncooperative. And, you know, the reality is the husband can get an annulment. She cannot. And if the tribunal is doing that, um, he's going to give her one, too. He's wrong. She cannot get back into the church until he's dead. You know, he can actually remarry, which is the interesting thing. The victim's spouse, whether it's a woman or a man, can remarry. Uh, but someone, there was someone who was the victim, and there was someone who basically perpetrated the whole thing, and they refused to uh, uh, follow church uh, doctrine. And uh, so they won't get an annulment. They're not supposed to. If he gets remarried, wouldn't that get off your hook and she can go back in? No. It can be a little bit hard to detail, you know, live like this without bullet points. We always work without a net on this show, folks. So it's going completely from memory. When I get a little older, I won't be able to do it at all. And I'll have to learn how to read a teleprompter or something along that line. And I hate making notes on this stuff. You know, if I need dates and exact names... Okay, uh, we're not to the past the point where everybody's free and clear, but do not consider yourself Catholic anymore if you're going to do that to your spouse. So just to recap, number one, that if you decide to divorce your spouse and you don't have a legitimate reason, for example, and uh, most people aren't raging alcoholics from head to toe walking around with a wife beater uh, tank top and it's going to beat you all the time, night and day. I'm talking about the people who are trying to throw that in because they're trying to make it look like they're justified in the least on a little the smallest level. Who knows? You know, when you don't love somebody anymore, you're supposed to work towards it. But uh, you don't get a free and clear with the church that you can just go back to church and act like nothing is uh, wrong and everything is okay and everybody's going to see you there with a happy face like, how'd you get out of it? And then go back to confession and go to communion all over again when you dump them. You can't. That means that your tribunal has been ill-informed. He's made a bad decision. Uh, the husband didn't fight it enough. He's certainly going to feel good when someone uh, becomes uh, free and clear of the previous marriage to somebody who is abusive in that way mentally, because that's what it is. It's a mental and spiritual abuse, even if she doesn't smack the guy. Um, and then they're trying to go in there and they're trying to infiltrate the church and they're affecting it. So you cannot allow this with your friends even. They go back to church and then tell, oh, no, I just told him I was sorry and he forgave my sins, blah, blah, blah. And, and now I'm going back to communion. No, you can't. He's still alive. He's still alive. And you can't go in there and say you're sorry. because Are you sorry? Well, yes. You know, I mean, that works with little kids, okay? But not on this topic. That you're sorry? Also, in other words, if you could restore it, you'd put it back again? No. Well, then you're not sorry. You're sorry, you know, because of the offended God. That's not the same thing. And you can rectify it. You know, when you steal something, even when you're a kid, they'll tell you that, oh, can you return it? You know, can you uh, make amends somehow or another? You know what I mean? They want you to make restitution for it. Not just do three Hail Marys and you're on your way. How are you going to do restitution to a husband that you dumped? But this is a sad thing, and it's going on in a traditional church where you expect that people would follow more rules of reverency and respect and veneration and uh, something you know more along the lines of being humble and all the positive attributes of the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Instead of becoming selfish, it seems like it doesn't matter where they're at when they get like this, and they're prone to being this way that all you have to do is just go to confession, you're free and clear, and your husband's over there, and he's he's skinny, and he's depressed, and who knows what else, might became an alcoholic because of it, or suicidal. In the other denominational churches, they basically turn to people who divorce like this. Don't celebrate them. Don't suck up, oh, I'm so sorry it didn't work out. You know, don't let them feel special or they did something good. You know, basically treat them like they're an outcast. I'm serious. Treat them like they're an outcast, not the both of them. I mean, not the victim spouse. Welcome him back or her. But treat the other spouse, if you know the details, because some people are going to lie, and especially the spouse who's not in the right. They'll lie to cover herself up because they made friends at the church, and they're going to try to hold them. Uh, but you guys... Uh, you got to be ready to you know, step up and be a good Catholic, not just evangelizing people when they get close to the church, stopping them from leaving the church by having a talk with them, maybe even see if you can get them to go talk to their priest if they're really having a serious issue. We, have, we know apologetics and we know the catechism. We do that a lot. 
and we have to be good at it because we can drop that ball. Like talking to a suicide off edge and making sure that they don't jump. Imagine that kind of pressure. Well, that's what we consider to, you know, the seriousness of the degree when someone's thinking about leaving a church or we may have them at the doorstep and if we say the wrong thing or it's handled wrong, we'll lose that. We take this stuff very seriously and that's how you can be with your friends that are married is try to work on them. A lot of times the person who's dumping the other one has their mind made up. All they can think about is the one thing that that person did to all the time they were married and they reiterate it, coming at it from different angles and bring up different points about it. But they'll forget all the, the thousand things that they did right. And that's uh, what the other uh, denominations call Jezebel spirit. It's like there's scales over their eyes. They can't see anything. It's like a spirit. You can't treat it like that if you're the victim spouse and see if you can, because you have the authority to say remote prayers. You don't have to get over to them at bedtime and throw the holy water on them. Uh, but you can't try to say uh, deliverance prayers and so forth uh, while they're at work. And But you storm heaven, start rosary, no venus, and all that. We'll do another thing and basically some ideas on how to save your marriage at some point uh, beyond watching that movie uh, Divorce Remedy. I forgot what it was called. Uh, that, that's a book. So if you have a thought of how to have a divorce, give us a call, all right? Because we might give you some information. You know that after the first two years of the honeymoon, you know, you're, you're going to have to work, okay? And it's not going to be like this feeling. You know, everybody wants this infatuation feeling you got again and again. I know people who dump people one after the other because they want that feeling back. Oh, this one didn't have either two years later. Sometimes, oh, that one lasted three years. But when the infatuation is gone and this feeling is all gone, they think that the marriage is dead or whatever, and they're, they don't even want to do anything about it. It's an epidemic out there, especially with Facebook, because they get that feeling talking to people on Facebook, and it's not even real. They get up, the person gets off the plane, they look nothing like their picture, and they think they love them already, and they try to make that one work since they went they got that far, or they ended prematurely, you know, right there in the spot or later in the day, and they end up going back home, whoever the person is, back on the plane, and you got two disappointed people, and a, and a gal or a guy who's still uh, thinking, rethinking their marriage. But uh, we're not supposed to emotionally cheat online anyway. You cannot fraternize and socialize with members of the opposite sex on Facebook and say, they're just my friends, especially the people who are going to be more tempting to the guys. Don't make excuses when guys actually make passes at you online. Oh, he's harmless and stuff like that. See, that's the beginning of the problems right there. That's not even common sense. It's just not right. God bless everybody. Uh, we'll see you next time on the Art of the Deals. 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 Uh, <laughs>